Warren and weird, right? Yeah, and this is going to be really rough for, for Chris because Chris is, you know, really relying on a lot of spot removal to deal with these like types of creature matchups. So if Chris were to play against a deck like Zoo, the combination of Swords to Plowshares and Snapcaster Mage would make it extremely difficult for his opponent to have any shot of winning. Right. Whereas when Chris is playing against a deck like Goblins, those cards, you know, the, there are going to be a lot of things on the other side of the table. And yeah, in critical general. mass right. is something that he can reach, because Chris really can only apply pressure with Vendillion Clay. His Tarmogoyf can kind of wall up yeah, the ground. Tarmogoyf, wall, uh, Knight of the Reliquaries, also mm -hmm. serve, you know, those serve some purpose, and, and at some point it's going to do, you know, Abyss Duty when it gets attacked or whatever, but for the most part, like, yeah, Noah's going to be free to uh, roam the board. Also, oh, it looks like we started with a, a Lackey. I'd rather, yeah, so. much rather start with Aether Vial if I were Noah. Uh, Chris almost has four, uh, three Force of Wills, not four. He has three Force of Wills and a Kazali Pride Mage to interact with Aether Vial. So not a, not a ton of uh, interaction for, for Chris on Aether. And Aether Vial is just going to do work. Uh-oh. So this could spell trouble. It looks like Chris uh, is going to play either uh, a Green Sun Zenith or a Noble Hierarch. Yeah, means, I imagine it's going to be a green sun zenith because he's going to want to block with that lackey with the dryad arbor. It looks like hierarch. Uh oh. Yeah, so he's either I'm chumping or. Of course, that lackey then. Did he have it? Yeah. Okay. Hey, right, easiest way to lose. Yep, that's a force in his hand. Yeah. Would you would you block with a hierarch here? <coughs> Looks like he's got a spell snare. Yeah, Chris decides to bite and go ahead and uh, block there. And a pile driver comes down. And this is already like a really scary situation for Chris Van Meter. So he's going to go ahead and force that. Not really what you want to be doing, forcing like Yeah, the, forcing the, 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 not, the not lackey creature. The not lackey, not... Um, Aether Vile. Not Aether Vile. And in the later game, not Siege Chain Commander or Ringleader. Right. <laughs> I mean, it looks like Tarmogoyf uh, might come down. Oh, it has the option of coming down for this. Chris has that option. Yeah, and I mean, so Tarmogoyf is uh, pretty big right now. It's a 3-4, so... Yeah, b big enough. Yeah, big enough to hold... Big enough to hold the Lackey and uh, beat any uh, early, uh, what you call uh, incinerators. Jump home incinerator. Let's see, uh, given that I, if he had the time graph, I'm not sure I would have forced the pile driver. Just let the let, let the time graph wall up and start playing for turn 800. <laughs> exactly. Now uh, let's see what Noah has to offer this turn. Can you? I don't really see his hand all that well. Let's see a bad lands. Yeah, I mean he has the third land. I'm interested right. to see if he has a chieftain, then he could start doing some really impressive things in the next turn. Uh, if he has a wasteland, he might just want to wasteland Chris's wasteland because that, that's interesting. You know, I could put him pretty far ahead. He doesn't. He hasn't seen Chris uh, not play it like another. He might have. Chris could have a dual land very easily that he really wants. And he might looks just like have another pile driver. That uh, looks like. I think that looks like a pile driver. Yep, there it is. All right. So. Oh, he doesn't have a bad land. He chooses chose not to play it. Maybe he's trying to induce a wasteland. I'm pretty sure there's a, a bad lands. Uh, that looks like a Richard import, actually. Yeah. So maybe he's trying to get Chris to use to use his, his wasteland. wasteland. That's an inter interesting. Interesting line. If he only has one more land. I mean, it doesn't seem that bad, though. Hmm. All right, so Chris is... Uh, yeah, so Chris, Chris has a Tundra as his last land. He clearly wants to protect that from Wasteland. So that's why he, let, he, he played the Time of with his own Wasteland to protect his Tundra. But if he plays a Tundra with the Forest, he almost always gets Wasteland if Noah would have had one. 
And right, well. he bites, so. Yeah. And that's a uh, Kazali Pride Mage. And, uh. What do you think? You think Chris is going to get in there with uh, Goyf? You kind of got I, to, I, right? I wouldn't. Really? Land, land Incinerator is terrible for, for Chris here. Yeah, but I mean, if he has an Incinerator, you. I mean, I guess you're. Yeah, you can't. You don't. You just don't want the lackey to. When you play against goblins, like taking a hit from lackey is a disaster, basically. Mm -hmm. I like playing Soul Ring. You know, for for those commander players, like turn one Soul Ring games are a lot different than not turn one Soul Ring games. Oh yeah. I mean, on turn two, you're yeah. you're on four. Exactly. Ah, uh, war mark. Only war. No, no incinerator. Even then, like, if what if Noah plays war and weirding there? Uh, he's he's got a really tough decision to make. Take a hit for lackey. You know, voluntarily sacrifice your time for it. <laughs> definitely gonna be attacking here. Maybe. Huh. I would right. I would gladly take three to kill the lackey if I'm if I'm so Chris. would I. Yeah. I that's and I mean I, Chris I, just I go ahead and uh, I would have blocked before I even turned him sideways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh I don't I'm not sure I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, three damage is, is nice, but not when you're at eight, you know, 18 to 15, not that big of a deal. It's certainly, like, not putting Chris in a, in a danger zone yet. Mm-hmm. All right. Chris Svenmeter is one of the best legacy players in the world. He is uh, somebody who had a ton of success on this. He, he just recently uh, level eight in the start in the, yeah, the Star City Players Club. A lot of that is because of legacy. Oh I mean, yeah, he's absolutely. won multiple legacy championships this year. I think so. Yeah. Right, and I, and I mean, I've seen him in top eights. Yeah, I've seen so. him in a lot of top eights. So. He was somebody who was one of the first people to not play standstill on the bug land, standstill decks. Okay. I, I've always hated that card. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's good if you have... I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, Noble Heart comes down for Chris, and that's pretty good. That's going to allow him to start playing his three drops, and I believe he has an Elspeth in his hand, which yeah. can really clog up oh, the board and can also make it so yeah, that you more can actually than kill your opponent and through a that very, wall. Yeah. See, I, don't, I don't like this attack. He... It's a, yeah, he blocked before he attacked. Uh, yeah. yeah, the with especially with a war marshal on the table. Right, right. Because you're not you're not even sure if your opponent's going to pay for it. Right, exactly. You know? Oh, there's a dryad arbor from Chris. So uh, if that is that one card in Chris's hand, and if he if that's an Elspeth, that's it's a big deal. That might be two swings from Time Ago. If we're close. But we got double exalted and you know three four. Yeah, that would. Yeah, it's two swings. Two swings. 8-0. Looks like another pile driver. Not a big pile driver fan, to be honest. I mean, it's fine. It puts people on a very, very fast clock. You, you want, you definitely want it in your, your combo matchups. You need, you need the turn, you know, four o'clock or whatever, but. And obviously good against Merfolk. <laughs> That's the, certainly true. One of, those, one of those creatures with a random protection ability that makes no sense. Like, to this day, I never understood why I was pro blue. Like, why Phantom Centaur is pro black. I mean, without those abilities, both of those cards, which have been kind of tournament cards for oh, a yeah. long time, Phenomenal probably would cards. not be very oh, good. Power Driver would still be... I'm sure, but it wouldn't be... Good. All right, so I mean, Chris is thinking here, but I'm I'd be very very surprised if we didn't see an Elspeth hit the table this turn. Make a guy and pass. Yeah, I think that's the play. And I think it's I think it's swing for eight. Really? Uh, maybe not. No, that, it's not. Because then you just die. 
Then he, yeah, then he has to chump block uh, the pile drivers, and then he doesn't have his exalted anymore. All right. Oh, so he's getting in again. Let's see what Noah decides to do here. And uh, that is an else in his hand. So yeah. Making yes. a good play of like deciding how he wants to, to play his whole turn before doing anything. I like that. Yeah, it's important. Like, because a lot of you, the time you make a play that seems obvious at the beginning of your turn, and then you're like, oh no, I can't go back and change that. Or you just, you know, you you telegraph like what you're going to do or whatever. Like, they can. And also, like, I guess if you uh, if he plays Elspeth and wants to, you know, fly over, yeah, you know, that's an option for him too. But like, just, yeah, sit there, plan out your whole turn, then then do it all like quickly. And with both of those exalted triggers, that soldier token is enough to throw in the air two turns in a row and finish off the opponent. It is. All right. So uh -oh. here comes Noah's bringing the beats. Hopefully, and, uh, I would. I would. I think he has to go. Block jump, trade jump. Yeah, and that's my play. If he swings with everybody, like I don't know why Noah would not attack with his tokens. Every whatever's getting flying. I don't think he has another uh, play. Stuck stuck on two lands and couldn't couldn't get his lackey hit. This is really interesting. Early on in this game, it looked like Noah had a huge yeah. advantage. But he baited Chris into a wasteland. Chris took it, and Noah, it was an insane wasteland. Yeah, actually, he baited, <laughs> like, him, into, he baited him into a winning play. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> usually you try and bait your opponents into a losing play. Uh, I don't like that. I, uh, I don't like that at all. Yeah, you kill Elspeth and then die. If I was Chris, I'd just let your Elspeth die and I'd crack back for a bunch. I don't know, I think I still just trade chump. Alright, so he wants to save it. I guess you could trade trade pile driver for that and then you're just under no pressure whatsoever. Yeah, and then you this is yeah, this is a, this is still a winning play for, for Chris. Another um, war marshal. Makes is, makes uh, saving Elspeth a lot. A lot stronger. Yeah. Because uh, Noah's clogging up the ground. Or uh, another Rishid import. I think there's a war chief in Noah's uh, Noah Castle's hand. So a goblin war chief, not goblin chieftain. So here, Chris has a few different options. Uh, my line is Elspeth makes Dryad Arbor fly. Uh, attack for five. Play the two drop in my hand. Yeah, uh, there's a Vendelian click in Chris's hand, I yeah, believe. So that's 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 works with the uh, Tundra, the Hierarch, and the Forest. Mm -hmm. Also, like the Dryad Arbor as a blocker isn't great because it, worst comes to worst, Noah can tap it with Richard and Port. Mm -hmm. So well, if, if Noah is going to assemble some crazy yeah. goblins chain, and so, but he's sending then, the the time of Garth, getting getting him dead. That's a Snapcaster Mage, I believe. Yes. Snapcaster and uh, Vendillion Click. Yeah, now Chris has three things that can all, you know, attempt to save this Elspeth. <clears throat> and he doesn't even need to, given the presence of Vendillion Click. So, so if Noah goes all out to, to kill Elspeth, this, uh, yeah, Chris can just let that happen and then... Yeah. All right, so the goblin dies. The uh, Mogwar Marshal. Mm -hmm. Mogwar Marshal's a card I, I like a lot. There's a lot of play to it. Yeah. I think people don't pay for it often enough. Echo. There are certain goblin draws that are, are slower when you... Goblin is very good as a... It has an inevitability against a lot of of the blue decks in, in Legacy. 
So if you play these slower games, if you just throw away a token, you, you lose a lot of that. All right, so here, as Chris, uh, like, he can... Nice. He can just block the pile driver and the Elspeth even lives. Oh, really? yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, geez. That's brutal. Yeah, I mean, now I probably should have been trying to face, but his draw really just didn't work out. That's Yeah. Yeah. This game, uh, Chris Van Meter takes uh, game one of this uh, win and end match. Yeah, so more, more than likely. Pretty nice for Chris to get up a game here against Goblins. You know, having, especially winning a game on the draw against Goblins is something that's, you know, really hard to do. Yeah, I think he got very fortunate that when he didn't force the lackey that, and he played a hierarch, that he was able to block. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, he had just gotten like gem palmed or something. Gem palmed or Warren Weirning. Then, uh, then, you know, ringleaders and war chiefs and, or matrons or, you know, he gets out of, he gets out of hand quickly. Yeah, like the card advantage engine that Goblin is able to reduce is surprisingly potent. Oh, it's, and he does well, have an inevitability on Chris. I think so. I think it, Elspeth might change that, but I think if Chris, Elspeth's got to be one of Chris's best cards. Yes. Easily. Certainly. And it's so good, like, I think the sharpshooter is, like, pretty good for Chris. The sharpshooter seems very, very good for Chris, uh, for Noah, I'm for sorry. For Noah, yeah. Uh, how do you think uh, Chris is going to sideboard? What, is, what has he got Well, to he has in? access to paths, which are well, certainly coming in. He's got a full set of paths. He has a full set of, of paths. Uh, he has an extra force, which on the draw, I imagine he'll probably want. Perhaps. And, uh... You know, we're getting tweets in right now that uh, the reason Goblin Pilot Driver was given protection from blue was to effectively fight Psychotog, which at the time was doing oh, yeah, exceptionally yeah. well in tournament play. And that makes sense. Sure. You know, Psychotog was this infinity toughness blocker at the time. Actually, not infinity, it just felt like infinity. Yeah. It was very easy to just play a, uh, a Psychotog and just sit behind it and people couldn't really attack because well and a lot of the there wasn't the removal wasn't phenomenal at that time either in fact until until smother came around there wasn't much that much playable removal that just straight up killed psychotog like mm -hmm. the black removal was terror or dark banishing or something yeah, like that demise. yeah and you know the, you can't burn it and there wasn't white removal and they have all these has and oblivion rings and yeah, people used to have to bounce people's psychotogs. Yep. Now, uh, Path to Exile is kind of a double-edged sword when you're playing against goblins because like, like, ramping them is so bad. Yeah, because they, they <laughs> could use every land they get. It's like accepting a loss on go like if you path the goblin lackey, you're just like, oh, you can do half of your job. Yeah. And you're still going to trade for my removal spell. I actually wouldn't bring in Path if I were Chris. I think it's... Unless he has a bunch of cards. Like, I don't think he wants Spell Snares. Despite the presence of... Like, the War Marshals and the Power Drivers aren't what uh, Chris is concerned about. I just don't think he has enough to bring in to be able to take out his Spell Snares. That's, that's probably true, unless he wants the, uh, the Paths. Yeah, I mean, the, the things I like. I like Force on the draw, because you're going to need to counter Vials. Mm -hmm. um, I think Thrawn is good. Sure. And also, he also might need the Spell Snares just to have the uh, blue count for Force. That's also true. I mean, he is bad. He's, he's very, very uh, light on the blue cards. He has what, three clicks, two Snapcasters, uh, two Jaces at seven. Well, the Jaces are probably coming out. Sure, yeah. Three Forces, uh, like... But even in his main deck, he has the like, 19 blue cards. So on the, on the low end. Uh, for, for Noah's sideboarding, um, he, has, he has a bunch of very, I would say, cute goblins. He has an earwig squad, a Tuk Tuk scrapper. Uh, he's definitely bringing in his, uh, his Parish, Parish and his one. Parish clone, Nature's Ruin, a portal version of the same card. Yeah, now 
Um, I wonder how much better his sideboard would be, especially matchups like this, if maybe he cut some of the cards that are kind of cutesy. I like the cute cards because they, uh, you want to keep the goblin engine intact. But you still want a few perish, right? Oh yeah, I would he, has, two he, has, he has two perish basically. Oh, he has a nature, one oh, nature's ruin, one one, right. one perish. <clears throat> like I actually like um, Goblin King and Goblin Dex and uh, like I like Eric Squad I, and Tuck Tuck Scrapper. Yeah, and Goblin King is really good, especially like, against the rug decks and stuff because they'll try to like create this board where they have Tarmogoyfs and just creatures with like large toughnesses yeah. in order to you know just gum things up so they can eventually like win with v clicks or planeswalkers right and if you have a goblin king you just tutor you invalidate time and, yeah. right, and make them have lightning bolt uh he has and they're starved for spot removal against you anyway yeah so I don't think I don't think no changes much. Just the just the nature. Maybe pyrokinesis if he's you know if, if he wants to like last game it would have been nice. You would, you know get your get your high arc, your click, your pride major. You know he would have gotten two creatures easily for it for for zero mana. Pyrokinesis is a uh, pretty powerful spell. Uh, yeah, it's like it's the type of card that would never see print today. Just like. Just way the way magic works today, it, it would just completely dominate standard if it was legal. You know the ability to pitch a red—it's the red force of will. Yeah. The ability to pitch a red card, you deal four damage to creatures, split any way you want. Really? I, I know my standard deck would actually just concede <laughs> the one. I played. I played Illusions yesterday. All right. So Noah has a turn one lackey again. Yep. Let's see if it connects. I think it's important. That it doesn't look like it's going to connect. Chris has a... Uh, a white card in his hand. Yeah, he has a Caracas and a sword, so... I think uh, the correct play is to pass the turn and uh, path the lackey when he attacks. That way uh, you give him the is maximum amount of time it, so that his dream is Is it a path or a sword? I can't tell. Hopefully it's a sword for him. Yeah, for, hopefully for Chris. Yeah. Uh, Goblin lackey, not a legend. <laughs> I like Krakus. It's a path. It is a path. So that's... And good again, good that's, for Noah. It's good for Noah. Basically, he's conceding half of what... Half of what Lackey could do. More or less. Like, he doesn't get to, you know, go nuts or whatever, but... Path was never good on turn one. <laughs> And, uh, you know, there are a few cards that really demand that they be pathed on turn one. Yeah. And Goblin Lackey is probably the best example I can think yeah. of. Goblin Lackey and Welder, I think, are the only two sure. I can really think yeah. of. Both goblins. Nice. nice. So, uh, no plays a, a Richard Import on turn two. With the path that gives him three lands, and Chris is going to be stuck, you know, only has one mana available for his turn. So, unlikely to do... Looks Chris, like could be able to land a I think. Or he can green sun for Dread Arbor. Is it time ago? I'm not sure if he wants to green sun here. The green sun definitely has like some value as the game progresses because he's going to be able to use it to grab something like a knight. But yeah. You know. It might just, even though I'm I'm not a huge fan of uh, just you know random end step brainstorming. He might he might want to cycle brainstorm basically here. I think he has two. I'm not sure if he has another land. I didn't really get a great look at his whole hand. I know his. Looks I imagine like he, he must have a land because he elected not to green sun there. Uh, yeah, if, if, if you, you don't have a land, you don't have a land green yeah. sun there. Or maybe he wants to set up the green sun with a shuffle off of brainstorm. I don't. I could mm -hmm. see that play being reasonable. It looks like two time guards for Chris. What I'm saying. Is that a word? Oh, that's a matron. Oh, that's one of the most backbreaking plays. Um, play a, a, a freshly played lackey and a war chief in the same turn. Yeah. So you can see. So right. And oh, that's a relic. That's interesting. 
I, I like that a lot. Uh, the more I think about it, yeah. Expand a lot, so. uh, they have, it makes Time War Zero One, makes Knights 2-2 two, two, temporarily at least. And it counters uh, half of a Snapcaster Mage. Mm -hmm. So, as well. and or you could just leave it sit and play and like take away their options, you know. So, brainstorm end of turn for Chris. No, I believe it's in response. Oh, it's in response to it, okay. Another brainstorm might be getting put back. He's gonna have to draw one of the two cards he puts back, but not both. Assuming he has a, a shot. I don't see it. It's hard to see uh, Chris's hand. Yeah, I don't see any lands in there. Right. Which makes it I don't so really know the, like, the left the part point. of his hand. I put the trap. Yeah, tapping the trap seems pretty good. Yeah, if you if you tap if you're worried about swords or path or whatever, he's just gonna cast it in response to you porting. But now oh, there's a swords in Chris's hand now. It looks like the the ponder. Uh... Yeah, so. Uh... That? This turn, I think Chris is going to be able to... There's a Misty Rainforest. It's just going to Swords this immediately. going to crack this, and then he's probably mm -hmm. going to Green Sun. Mm -hmm. Grab a uh, Savannah here. It's the best land he can grab. Or, I'm sorry, a uh, Tundra. He can't... Well, if he's going to Green Sun, he can't get Tundra. Yes, so he needs... So he needs probably Savannah. Oh, that's a trap. Like so trap. that probably means that Chris has a Vendillion click in his hand. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Or potentially a Jace, but Vendillion click is far more likely. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure if the Jaces are still going to be in his deck. This right, right. Especially that Pats are. Yeah. Now, <sighs> so why is that Mystery Rainforest on the side? I uh, exiled it with Relic. Oh yes, okay. Other thing that's potential is like he might want the option to Snapcaster Mage or Brainstorm. That's not. That is another potential. Right now. Oh, you get a. He's got, uh, that's a matron, a goblin matron, so, one, he's got another matron in his hand. Looks, looks like we're going long. Yep. Might be and, a little uh, trouble for him, because his, you know, he doesn't have a, you know, a ton of mana to work with. He never got, he never got any mana for free off of Lackey or Aether Vial. And he, uh, so he, might, did, he did, however, get pathed. Which right. Which definitely helps. Was, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure I could. I'm sure, I would get ringleader if he, because he doesn't have another land. He just misses land that turn. I'm just seeing what what Noah's exact hand is. And Looks it like at least one white border card, so that's probably another goblin matron. Could also be one of his uh, somewhat random. Oh, uh, cards, red like elemental blast. He might have cited those in, even though I wouldn't. Yeah, Red Elemental Blast doesn't seem great here. N I mean, I sure, it counters himself, but it doesn't have creature type goblin. Exactly. And one of the big things, though, when you're playing Red Elemental Blast that makes it so good is because it lets you win a Jace War, and when you're not playing Jace, He's, and yeah, people not, are sideboarding it out against, against you, you. Yeah. then it... Uh, here comes a, comes a knight. Only a 2-2. Chris removed his uh, Misty Rainforest last turn. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that Path to Exile. Mm -hmm. 
a land would be very good. Assuming, assuming Noah has a. Well, it looks like. Looks like Ringleader anyway. Yeah, I think Ringleader is going to come down, and we're going to start watching the Goblin Card Advantage engine. Right. And uh, hopefully, I, hopefully not for Noah. Uh, hopefully, he has enough time to to reap the benefits of his card advantage. No, uh, Chris is going to brainstorm. He's looking for a force. Right. And uh, I think he also wants uh, another blue card because. His opponent's tapped out, and this is a perfect opportunity for him to take advantage of Snapcaster with Brainstorm. And his Snapcasters are going to be very bad after this turn. Because yes. his opponent has the Relic. Yes. So this is a... Like, this is going to be... This is going to be when he Snapcasters. It looks like we get another Ringleader and a Pile Driver. That's pretty good. Hmm. Par Could for the course. Worse. Yeah. Yeah, par for the course. The fact that there's another ringleader is oh yeah, it's especially well, dangerous. Thing. I think Noah's going to need to stick a a war chief at some point. That'll that'll really help him. Yeah, that'll make it pass so that all he of can, his cards. You know, right now I don't. I, his hand onto the table. It, it seems like Noah can just lose with the six goblins in his hand at this point. It's definitely a possibility. I think Elspeth right. really puts him in danger of that. Absolutely. And again, it's actually interesting just how strong this relic is this game. Like he has, yeah, it's, Chris has two tower yeah. in his hand. He has a knight in play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Earlier snap, today. Potential snapcaster mage looking like. It's got a... That's what you want out of a card. Like uh, You want a card with a variety of... That interacts with a lot of and, different know, cards from your opponent. You don't want to just... Worst case scenario, you cycle it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so uh, Chris is going to go ahead and uh, grab a Tundra. Some some polar bears hanging out, you know? Whatever, by the, by the, by the tropical islands. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I often wonder about the geography. Yeah, of say. the Bantuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, we have uh, Noble Hark getting played against uh, Noah, so oh, Just no, kidding. Chris decides not to uh, cast that. He, he might cast it with a, a Trop. Uh, nope. So again, for those of you at home who might not be able to see the cards on Noah's side of the table, that is a Relic of Regenitus toward the top, which is what's keeping Chris's Tarmogoyf and Knight of the Relic Quarry from being exceptional. Uh, there's a Goblin Matron below that, and then a Ringleader below that. Noah's going to go ahead and tap that Relic again. Now, this is a perfect opportunity for Chris to uh, use his Snapcaster Mage. And while normally fact, you would want to be getting swords back, when there aren't really many targets. Huh. Oh, Vendillion Click. Interesting. Now, maybe he just wants to peek out of, out of uh, Cap uh, Caracas available, not, not uh, Tundra. So, to me, if somebody, somebody of Chris's caliber... Uh, play, made this play against me, I would immediately put Chris on a Spell Snare or potentially a Brainstorm, but most likely a Spell Snare. I would not cast a 2-drop if I was Noah. Because Chris knows better than to like just bluff a bluff a blue mana when Karakas has, uh, has a lot of value with yeah. the Vendillion Click. And uh, he also conveniently with V-Click left Noah with multiple 2-drops in hand. Uh, with the intention of getting Noah to go two drop, two drop, right. the following turn, and the spell and Chris will know which one he there. wants to counter. Probably exactly. a pile driver over a Mog War Marshal. All right, so both players mm -hmm. at sixteen. Noah has a lot more cards in his hand and has Man. the ringleader refill if he wants to, but, but may not get the chance to. Well, I mean, the relic does buy him a ton of time. The it v does. It is, really does. Uh, the V-Click's going to start beating, and the V-Click is a four-turn clock right now. Right. Uh, 
This is this is actually really good for Noah. He gets to go three drop, two drop because he has uh, a war ch a goblin war chief. So not yeah. only does it help him out this turn, but it saves him mana in all of his future turns as well. Yeah, and uh, he's going to go ahead and try to play this pilot driver, but Chris is probably going to spell snare it. We assume right. that he has a spell snare in hand, right? I would I would assume. He does not. His hand. It, is, I don't uh, think it does. It's time to go have something. Huh. Ugh, I, I do not like the war chief attack. If I were Chris, I would trade. Trade the war chief. Trade Vanilla and click for war chief, and probably have to, has to chomp. Maybe it's the the pile driver is a seven. If he if he just traded with the war chief, he would be taking ten. Yeah, it's probably six. Six, six, six and is that's somewhat Mercari situation when you're playing against goblins. Right, because, because they, they can the just like to flood the board. Right, and know. just like sacrifice two creatures, deal you four damage mm -hmm. type of type of effect. So it looks that's like exactly that's what, what he does. Yeah, so he's going to a very safe 13. So really the way Goblin's Dex beats you from double digits is like more power drivers than you have blockers. Yeah, now, interestingly enough, Chris is going to be able to Snapcaster that Swords right now, which is so pretty awesome. Them. Yeah. Let's see. I mean, if if you're going to, if he has a snapcaster, I imagine he'll use it now, and his bones tapped out. I have wasteland. Pretty pretty strong. Yeah, wasteland really no, strong. Noah's issue right now is mana. Mana. Hmm. This is very get very aggressive. I, I mean, I think like he has to be. And Noah's only going to gain one from the Swords to Plowshares. Assuming it's Swords. And not Brainstorm. Yeah. Tundra doesn't really help us, but yeah. I think Swords is, is a safer play, but maybe not the best play because, like, I don't think Chris wants to prolong the game. I think Chris wants to find something to bury Noah. Yes. Because Noah, Noah has all the cards in his hand. Like Chris, is, Chris is basically drawing off the top of his deck. And that's why Chris is playing such an aggressive game here. Chris is trying to, you know, both these players do need to play a bit faster. Um, they're, you know, not even that deep into game two, and we have less than, oh, wow, uh, yeah. less than 11 minutes left on the clock, so. It might be a small time extended, but usually it's not more than a couple, couple minutes. minutes yeah. for our, um, This. Oh, yeah. Okay. That he has the relic. Right, right, right. It. And he has another relic in hand, too, so. Oh, that's nice. And a land. That's, that's big. That's really big. Yeah, now, if, if he hadn't made that chieftain attack the turn before. Then the, war, the war chief? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the war chief, rather. I did not like. Yeah, the war chief is just so strong for him. This is potentially very good for, for Noah, like... Yeah, I mean, Noah's just in a commanding position in this game. Yeah. I feel like uh, Noah could have locked it out with a sharpshooter as well. A yeah, sharpshooter would have been exceptional, considering it would have yeah, killed the Tarmogoy. Because with his four lands, he... In a war chief in play, he's just a matron for sharpshooter. Kill you... Pop kill relic, your, make the Tarmogoy... Well, he can't pop relic with only four lands. If he had the, if he goes, if he has four has, lands, if he has war chief, but he turned the fifth land. Oh, he got his, he's got his wastelanded. Yeah, oh, I guess you're right. So we're back on four lands, but it's still like kill the snapcaster and like threaten to like kill the knight and the tarmogoyf at any point. I also don't know if Chris uses the wasteland if his opponent doesn't has, ha a, has the that's war chief. Yeah, that's a. Yeah, that's a. I think Chris still uses like what's he clearly doesn't need the mana himself. You're right. So. No, that's a good attack. It's a really good attack. All right, so now it's going to try to trade the Snapcaster for the, for the uh, matron. matron. 
and uh, just keep keep the board down like when you have the biggest creatures. Uh, one of the reasons why it's so good is because that makes the Gen Palm Incinerator one uh, one worse. One yeah. worse, which means he's going to have to use his relic for this if he's going to want to if mm -hmm. he's you know going to actually kill a knight yes. or a top. I guard. think if I'm uh, Noah, I, he uses other. Uh, I believe that's a, a matron. It, I, I might be wrong. It almost looks like a seventh edition goblin matron, the white border card in Noah's hand. Use that for a second incinerator. And then next turn, incinerate, incinerate, then pop relic. We need to draw a land to do it, but... If you do, it's just such a powerful yeah, play. You, you, both of his huge creatures are dead. The other yeah. alternative is to get enough hardcast force from Chris. Yeah. Just to get enough goblins in play where... So we have, uh, I mean, basically at this point, with only with less than seven minutes left on the clock, like they, they don't really stand a chance of finishing a game three. Right, right. So absolutely, this game is going very, very slow. Yeah, Even though it's a uh, you know a long game, they still yeah yeah they they should speed up. But I think one of the one of the major things that's going on here is that uh, you know Chris potentially could can win, win one yeah. out. Absolutely. I mean, Noah, Noah, even though he's in such a commanding position, isn't really making the plays that make him win the game very fast. Yes. He's just kind of pressing a little bit of value every turn. Mm-hmm. And that's fine to do if you're going to play, if you're going to make a decision every five seconds. But yes. Oh, wow. He, Noah just got crushed. All right, so uh, Noah attacks with a 2-2 ringleader. Blocks, Tarmogorf blocks. Then Noah pops the relic to make Tarmogorf a 0-1. But still before damage, Chris Van Meter sacks a land. But it's not just a land, it's a creature land in Dryad Arbor. So now Tarmogorf is a 2-3 and just chumps, chump attacks the, the ringleader. That's a, it looks like Chris is going to be able to win this one out at this point. I mean, or maybe even two. Uh, like Noah's got a, a goblin matron in play, nothing else. But he also has like a ringleader in his uh, hand. If he has, oh, uh, don't pass the turn, please, please incinerate the time ago. <laughs> uh, the knight's too big. No, knight's not too big. Yes, it is. So. Okay, so he's going to grab Badlands. So uh, he is going to incinerate. He has a, a War Marshal he might play, but I, you have to incinerate the Knight. Yeah. Just, so, the, the, yeah, the Time of Garth. Yeah, and I mean, he's going to, you know, it's a cantrip removal spell. It's, right, it's, it's very a powerful for him. So I say you have to use one of his best cards or whatever right here, but... There you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and Chris doesn't have a way to grow the the time of guards. Uh, so Chris is. Does Chris have anything in his hand, or is he? He is, he is hellbent. Okay. I'm not sure yeah. what the. Yeah. Then given that they're pressed with time, I I don't like. Is that a nether vial? Uh, not much of a draw step. Alright, so it's possible that Chris can be attacking here. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're afraid of some like War Chief Pile Driver combinations? Sure. Well, basically, what I'm thinking is that I, I, he must know that he is, he knows his opponent still has like a ringleader and things like that. Yeah, he, he, he can't beat that. Like, he I, can't beat it. He, attacking is correct no with Chris. Out. Yeah. Well, he may he oh, may not so be you aware. Just top deck an Elspeth and then win after this attack if the if the attack goes through, right? Perhaps. So he's getting a second dry diver. 
I like I like the trend towards the second dry dive in a lot of these legacy decks. It's very powerful. Yeah, I mean it gives your green sense a lot more power too. Or just like random fetch like fetch lands like right there. They let you like block in like win yeah. racing situations. And does something other than make mana. It's really good nutrition match. Especially when you're playing equipment, it's just another body to carry And now we have uh Noah can do whatever he wants this turn. <laughs> the world is his oyster. Yeah, so another relic's gonna really. Like, Chris knew he had that He's in his hand. He's got two and a half minutes to, to finish it, though. Yeah. It's. But he does, he, doesn't he have another matron that he can use there, to another There's a matron. Uh, and then he, he can just get an incinerator. And Not then this turn, turn, but next turn. Yeah, and then he still do. has three turns yeah. to end it. So he, this, this match is a draw. Uh, likely. I mean, Chris has Chris has draw. I don't. I don't think the game's over. This game's over. Over. I got no would win given infinite time, but I'm. He's taking like two minutes for like to search out a you know a war chief or whatever. Also, uh, also that's not uh, an incinerator. I don't understand how you can not kill, not get an incinerator in this spot. There's a there's a pile driver. In Noah's hand. As well, so I think he's. That's gonna be the play. Yeah. yeah, so he's he's gonna be able to win on time. More than likely, I I can't see too many. Uh, Chris has a trop, and what did he draw? Uh, a green card, maybe. Maybe scavenging ooze. Kind of trying to think, trying to see what green cards I don't recognize. <laughs> All right, and Chris is that just. You even have a scavengers? Yeah, he has a scavengers. That would actually be intense. The scavenging ooze would just be huge. <laughs> oh, wasteland. Not a green card at all. Hmm. You wasteland the bad. Oh, you say go. I, I don't like saying go. I, I would use the wasteland. Wow. All right. I guess he went th maybe wants a wasteland for post relic shenanigans. Yeah, and I mean he's gonna have to trade this knight with a pile driver anyway. <coughs> and potentially, the the knight won't even be able to trade if he's relic and uh, no, has some sort of lord effect or some sort of like, toughness pumping effect, and he doesn't know. No, it's like capable of that. Yeah. And it's goblins, so that type of thing happens all the time. Yeah, this looks really good for me. Yeah, so Noah's, Noah's just gonna. It's just turning everything sideways, and Chris is gonna. Uh, port, port the Dryad Arbor. This game. You like wasting it with the. Oh no, it's not. No, it doesn't matter. Just kidding. Let's bring out a play like. Now it looks like our match is going to be a draw, for sure. Yeah, so. Pile driver gets blocked. Pile driver gets blocked. Chris will have no board left. And it's going to take quite a bit of damage. Yeah, it looks like. Six. You'd have to draw the most insane brainstorm of all time. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have access to wrath or anything like that, so. Yeah, yeah at, at this point, uh, he, he basically has to brainstorm in a time ball case. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's. Well, that's time, so. If. If Chris uh, somehow survives two more turns, he's uh, got the draw at least. And it uh, seems very unlikely that's going to happen. Right. Happen. He's on six, facing seven. So, uh, facing six, actually. But and not what that. did he draw? Noble Hierarch. And that's it. So All right, so this match will be a draw. And uh, it doesn't... Presumably, it doesn't knock either player out unless one of them 
has, you know, terrible tiebreakers. Yeah, so now, you know, they're both in our winning. Another one.